Hello, I hope everybody is keeping safe and well in these extraordinary times. Welcome to another Create Your Light Challenge. This week, I thought we'd take a look at how to shoot some great portraits. If you're on your own, like myself, these could be self-portraits. If you're with friends or family, we could even look at how to shoot some great group shots as well. I hope you've had a chance to take part in the previous Create Your Light challenges. We've looked at how to shoot with window light. We've also looked at how to gear hack. So that's to make light shapers and light modifiers out of everyday household objects. So you can really create your own light, the light you're actually gonna work with. The Create Your Light Portrait Challenge builds on those previous Create Your Light videos. And today I'm gonna to talk about how to inspire yourself about shooting some portraiture, be it groups or self-portraits, and get you thinking in a different direction about how to look at the spaces you have to work with. There are many considerations to shooting great portraits. Light, which we've already covered in the Create Your Light Challenges, plays a big, big part in shooting a great portrait. You also need to think about composition, your lens choice, and the viewing angle you take relative to your subject. So together, let's take a look at these points and see how they can inspire us to shoot great portraits. Let's talk about composition first. It's a huge subject. I could spend all week discussing it. What I'd like to do is just pick a few of the composition guidelines and we'll take a deeper dive and have a look at those and see how we can use them to inspire us to shoot a bit differently. We have to work with the rooms, spaces and backgrounds that we have available to us. This is my front lounge. I could take some amazing classic portraits in this room but I'm not going to. Today I'm thinking about a bit more abstract. I'm thinking some abstract portraits. I'm gonna start having a look around how I can go about shooting some different kind of portraiture in what is a fairly classic space. I'm thinking about the way the light is bouncing off of these mirrors. And in particular, the beveled edges really fascinate me with the interesting little facets they give and the multiple reflections. So I'm thinking we're gonna actually start looking at some of these because I think we can actually create some really, really interesting portraiture if we just take a little look at how the light bends around the little beveled edges in these mirrors. So I've got my Z7, FTZ and 70 to 200. This is set up so it's pointing at the corner of the mirrors. I'm using SnapBridge to compose and remote trigger my Z7. And there's our final shot. We've got those three amazing refracted images in the bevel. It's very abstract, it's a bit different, it's not everybody's taste, but I like it. So here you can see the difference between shooting at 70 mil and 200 mil. If you use a 70 to 200 at 70, you'll get good depth of field. If you use it at 200 mil, you'll just get exceptional depth of field. Both images are shot at f2.8. So as you can see, lens choice is really important when you're actually shooting portraiture. I've been triggering those shots with SnapBridge connected via Wi-Fi to my Z7 from my smart device, and I can trigger and compose the shot quite easily. I'm outside here in the area where we park our cars. Um, plain fence works as a great background, but as you can see, the difference between 70 mil at f2.8 and 200 mil at f2.8 is quite big. If I get the opportunity and I've got the space, I will always try and shoot at a longer focal length here at 200 mil, rather than trying to shoot at 70 mil. I can't always do that, but when I do get the opportunity, I always do try to do that. So I've got a Z7 and 1430 here. By shooting low and close to my subject with a wide angle lens, I can actually make my subject look a lot bigger than they actually are. As you can see in the frame here, I've suddenly grown an extra few feet. It's a really great technique if you're actually trying to shoot and make somebody look a lot more impressive. So here's another thing you can do for composition. Create what is known as a bokeh background. So a bokeh background is where you have light sources behind you and if you shoot, say, on f1.8 or f1.4, you're gonna create beautiful circles in the background. You take a look at the image here I've shot, I'm just using some Christmas tree lights. What I've actually done, I have them behind me and I've actually got them in front of me as well, coming towards the camera. So that gives my foreground out of focus and it gives my background out of focus as well. So me being in the depth of field in the middle of that shot, I get the light from the Christmas tree lights, plus I get that beautiful bokeh type effect. All these are, are just really Christmas tree lights. This lens I'm currently recording the video with is on i4, so I'm not gonna get the same sort of bokeh effect that I actually get 
from when I'm shooting on the 50mm f1.8G that you just saw me shooting with. That was connected to my Z7 with the FTZ and I was again triggering it via snap bridge. Um, but using Christmas tree lights, you could use LED lights, anything, place part of it close to the lens, some of it behind you, and if you shoot on low apertures, like f1.4 or 1.8, you're gonna create those beautiful bokeh backgrounds. I hope you found those hints and tips useful. We'd love to see your images, so share them with us at hashtag createyourlight.